I was an outcast because of how I looked, and the girl who said she was my best friend turned out to be my worst enemy. She turned the whole school against me. That was a long time ago, but today I'm going to get my chance to tell her what I think of what she did to me. I always felt ugly. I had big glasses, acne, a big nose and short hair, and I used to wish that I was pretty so people would at least like me. There was one special person who cared about me, but I haven't seen him in over 14 years. I wish I could put my arms around him and let him know how much he changed my life. She doesn't know it, but we found that special guy, and he's here to surprise her. I was the ugly duckling in my family and at school. I felt so bad because my big sister was so beautiful. The boys never noticed me, but I look good now. And if I could somehow meet the boy I had a crush on in junior high, I would finally have the nerve to ask him out. Well, her Prince Charming is here, but guess what? He has no idea who his secret crush is. Won't he be surprised when he sees how beautiful the ugly duckling turned out? I'd like you to meet my first guest, Charmaine. Charmaine says she grew up feeling very ugly inside and out, like she could never fit in. Now, as you can see, I think she's turned into quite a beauty. Uh, but the pain from those younger years has not gone away? No, not entirely. I don't think it ever does. What was it like for you growing up? I started getting acne. I, um, you know, have, I felt like I had a big nose. I had worn glasses and short hair. And, um, you know, I just I felt real bad about myself. For a lot of people starting high school, uh, they can make things better because no one knows you, you know? And you can redefine yourself. You can start a new life. For you, high school was even worse. Yes, it was. Um, it was a small town, and in the Where beginning... Where are you from? From a small town in Michigan. Okay. And um, it was to the point, you know, everybody knows everybody. I'd grown up there. But when I entered high school, I wanted to be popular. And you began hanging with, you know, the popular crowd. Of course, at home, you want to be the good little daughter. And at church, you want to be the good church girl because you want everybody to like you. <laughs> that is such you know? a burden for the women have, you know? Yeah. You were desperate for attention because yes. you felt you weren't pretty. Right. So at 14, Charmaine had an affair with her teacher teacher was the first person to tell her she was beautiful, a princess, uh, told her she was wonderful. And all of this comes about at a time when she, as you've just heard, she wasn't feeling so good. Then the school found out about the affair and what happened. Um, he went to jail and, you know, when it hit the, uh, when it hit the ceiling, all my friends hit the road. He was well liked and I was the, um, the slut of this small town. So it got so bad that she tried to kill herself. Tell me about that. I remember, excuse me. It's okay. I remember once when my mom was gone and I was home, um, and the shame that I felt was so great. And I felt like I had been such a disappointment to my parents and to, you know, I felt like I had ruined everybody's life involved. And I remember going to the, uh, to the drawer in the kitchen and pulling out the biggest, sharpest knife I could find and realized, you know, that if I just did it, it'd be done, you know? Right. And, as I was standing there, and I remember trembling, and I remember just crying, and um, I just didn't care, thank you, anymore. And I remember the thought of my mother seeing her in my mind weeping over me. I couldn't do that to her again. I felt like I had already brought her enough pain, and I felt like I would just have to deal with my own pain and live with it you know, to keep her from having to go through yet another painful sure. time. Charmaine, throughout all this time, was there anyone who was there for you that accepted you who you were unconditionally? 
Yeah. There was um, a guy, a friend of mine in school, and we weren't real close at the, you know, at the beginning of our friendship, but uh, as we grew closer, he was always there for me, and he was unconditional. He never um, tried to use me. He, I don't even recall him ever trying to kiss me. And yet, he always made it known that... Um, he was on your side. That he was on my side and he liked me and wanted a deeper relationship. And I don't think I ever felt like I deserved a good guy. And he even told the teacher off and said, if you hurt this girl, he's going to deal with you. I don't know. Yeah. I, if, if he did, I don't know about that. That's a pretty wonderful thing. How long, um, what has happened since then? Um, I went on to get married and was in a very bad relationship. Um, because of only knowing bad relationships, right. you would choose another one. And then what? And um, I stuck with the relationship for 13 years. During that time, I gained a lot of weight. Um, I got up to, I blew up to a size 26. Um, finally, you know, trying everything and still a low self-esteem. And the marriage brought a low self-esteem. And I finally, eight years ago, I had my stomach stapled and was able to begin losing the weight and dropping it. And about three and a half years ago, I was able to get out of the relationship. And a month after my separation, I met my husband, Steve. Who's in our audience today. Steve, stand up so people can see you. Hello, has been through a great deal. Did you ever go back to the town where that happened with the kids? Have you seen those people? Is there such a thing as a class reunion? Um, they've had two reunions and I've been to neither. You've not gone? No. I'm thinking maybe you ought to go. In two years it'll be my 20th. I'm thinking maybe you just ought to go. Uh, the man that you married, was he like the young man that helped you out during those? Um, not my first husband, but Steve. I see a lot of qualities in Steve that was in Kurt. Yeah. Just the unconditional, the respect, the honor. We tried to, we always like to say thank you to the people that have helped us in life. We tried to have Kurt come to the show. He is in the Air Force and was not able to be here, but we told him to watch the show. So if you would like to turn to the camera, tell him what he meant to you. Okay, would you get that? This one, dear. Kurt, I don't think I appreciated you back when we were kids and appreciated how much honor and respect you gave me. And boy, I just wanted to tell you thank you for all the love and the unconditional respect that you gave me. And I wish you were here. And I hope to see you. Not a lot of questions, but there aren't a lot of people who, when they're young, when they're in high school, there aren't a lot of people, guys or gals, who can take somebody terribly unpopular and befriend them and stick up for them uh, against everyone else. How were you able to do that? Because you see, the guy wants to be popular too. How were you able to do that? I was pretty new in the school too. I just got into town about the same time she did. And I was from Las Vegas and we ended up, we just met one day and all the stuff before I never knew about so I didn't really care. It never mattered to me in the first place so I didn't really care that it, I didn't figure it mattered out. How does it feel to know, are you happily married? 
Oh, yeah, I've been married for 14 years now. And My wife, Gracie, and I got two children. Yeah. I think it should feel wonderful to know that you've made a real difference in somebody's life. I want you to encourage her to go back to her reunion and maybe you'll oh, go yeah. with her. Oh, I think that would be perfect. We'll be right back. <laughs> She just started to pick on me. It, she started to pick on me. She started it. She st everybody else left me alone. She kind of egged everybody on to do it. And she was very two-faced. She would tell the lies about me, and then she would come to my house and, and be nice to me. You destroyed my self-esteem. You drove me out of town. She just got up and left. She was angry. <laughs> Today we're talking about how hard it is to be a kid in high school. How awful. I have to tell you, I had a terrible time in high school. Just terrible. I mean, I felt so awful. Um, and now I think back and I can't remember what I felt so awful about, but uh, <laughs> then I did. Uh, and yes, I did go back to my reunion, but that's a whole other story. Tammy says she grew up feeling like an outsider and she didn't fit in with any crowd, right? Right. Uh, Do you uh, think it was because you were bi-ethnic? I think that had a lot to do with it. There, there weren't any other minorities. There were, everyone was either white or black. There was right. no in-between. And you were white and Indian? Correct. Okay. There was one person you thought was your true friend. Right, Martha. Tell me about that. Well, I, m I met her after I had moved to my grandmother's um, in seventh grade. And we became friends. She was very, very popular. And I thought, oh, this is the girl for me to... Because you were the unpopular right. one. If somebody very popular befriends you, you feel, that's it, I made it. It's great. And was it great? Were you popular? Uh, um, no. <laughs> it lasted for a very short time, maybe a week or so. Th then the newness wore off, and, and she just started to pick on me. It, she started to pick on me? She started it. She st everybody else left me alone. She kind of egged everybody on to do it. Huh. You, uh, having no other friends, told Martha your deepest secrets. Right. What was, would you share with us, could you, your deep secret? Well, I, I, it wasn't so much that I told her. She um, became very close to my family. She started dating my uncle, and she found out some things about me. I'd been sexually abused when I was younger, and she told everyone about it. Everyone in the school? Yeah. Why do you think that this friend, Martha, at first befriended you? Um, I think because she saw that my grandmother did a lot to me, you know, a lot for me, let me drive the car, gave me money to do things, go places, and she, my uncle also, I think she liked my uncle, so she wanted, he's only two years older than I am, she wanted to get with him, I think. So that was why she was nice to you. Right. Why do you think she spread rumors about you at school or, or told a real confidence? Um, just to make my life bad. That's how I felt at the time, just so she could get in. She was very two-faced. She would tell the lies about me, and then she would come to my house and, and be nice to me. Tammy felt not beautiful. She felt that maybe the kids in school were right, that she was the town prostitute. She felt suicidal, and she was put into a mental hospital. How many years since you've seen this, Martha? Twelve years. Okay. Why do you want to see her again? Because I want to show her that throughout everything she did to me, that I became a good, viable person. I, I become something I'm proud of. And that's what I'm doing. You told a 
curious about your pain. Tell Martha what you've been feeling. Don't let me do it. You tell Martha what you've been feeling these years. All these years, I felt that you destroyed my family. You destroyed my self-esteem. You drove me out of town. I would have been a much different person if you had treated me better. You'd let everyone, you'd let everyone to believe all these things about me. You first off, Tammy. This is the first I've heard a lot of this. You didn't know? A lot, no, I did not. No, I, I did Some, not. Sometimes Tammy. people do not. I, I, can I did not know that. Hold up. Tammy did not. Tammy did not have many friends. Tammy was always different. What about different. the secret of her being molested? I didn't know nothing about Martha, that. Tammy, my grandmother no, told you. No, I swear on my child's head that it's back here that I did not know that. You may have told your grandmother, but you did not tell me. My grandmother's told No, your grandmother didn't tell me. No, your grandmother did not tell me. Uh huh. Yes, she did. No, well, she did not. You told everybody. No, I did not. Tammy, do you think you and Martha can re? If could you go over these things together and repair the past? My past is repaired in my eyes. I did. <laughs> Your eyes, it's repaired. Are there other things, probably private things, that you probably want to tell her? I'm going to allow you to do that. We'll be right back. Mm. I'd get called things like ping pong head. I'd go home and I'd find toothpicks in the back of my hair and. <clears throat> Was he the, the big thing that everyone was oh, just... the biggest. He was Mr. <laughs> Everything. Mr. Everything. He was the jock. He was in the in crowd. I would sit across lunch and just... Oh. Do you have any idea who this is? You'll, uh, you'll notice if you're watching the show closely that Martha is gone. But um, I asked Tammy, and Tammy said, you didn't say anything, did you? I didn't say anything to her. Did she say anything to her? You were no. Long, long. no. Did, what? She just got up and left. She was angry. All right. She was angry, and she got up and left. Are you all right? I'm fine. She looks good. Uh, <laughs> I'd like you now to meet another uh, very beautiful swan. This is Annette. Annette says she used to be an ugly duckling, and growing up was a very unhappy time. She said she never had a date, never had guys pay attention to her. Uh, but waiting in another part of the building, we have Tony. Now, when Annette was in junior high school, this was the big crush. Uh, he never paid attention to her back then, uh, and we asked her, and she said, this man will not know who I am. First, let's hear your story. Why did you feel so much like an ugly duckling? It all boils down to the fact that I was different. I had glasses, and before I had braces, I could put a tic-tac between my two front teeth. Huge gap. <laughs> 
It sounds funny, but it it was really hard for me to deal with. People would go in it, do the water fountain thing, and I'd put water in my mouth and squirt water out my teeth. <laughs> and uh, that's the only way I could. That's I would do that for attention because that's the only thing that I could do to have friends. I didn't have friends, and uh, I'd have this terrible home perm thing, and I'd get called things like ping pong head. I'd go home and I'd find toothpicks in the back of my hair and. <clears throat> and I think probably, I mean, I, we have pictures of her then, and I have a list. Uh, it was the short hair, the bad perm, uh, the braces, and the glasses. Now, you know, you add all that together, and uh, it comes up to quite a package. She said that four days out of five, she would go home crying because the teasing was a ritual thing. Making it worse, she had a very popular older sister. And of course the kids would say, whatever happened to you? Uh, recess was the worst, right? The very worst. At recess, I would go outside and I would find a corner and sit in the corner because if I would walk through the, the courtyard, the kids would throw balls at me. <coughs> or sometimes the girls would walk up and grab the, the my glasses off my face and throw them on the ground and, and break them and I read this story I wrote a short story when I was nine years old about a little girl named Cora and everyone around her dies and then she ends up killing herself because she's so alone and you know children they bring that out they bring out their emotions and yeah. and how they act the drawings that they make the stories that they create that comes out and that's how they're really feeling and that scares me to death that I was like that and I didn't even know it it's fascinated with death kids are you know, at a certain point. Annette also uh, felt that if she were prettier, her dad would not have left her mom. And you know how hard it is for kids to go through a divorce. Uh, she felt if she were prettier, her sister would like her. If she was prettier, uh, she'd do better in school. Uh, and then it, she gets into high school. Tell me about the crush on this guy. Well, it was... Uh Junior high school, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, it started young. <laughs> he, uh, I... Was he the, the big thing that everyone was oh, just... the biggest. He was <laughs> Mr. Everything. Mr. Everything. He was the jock. He was in the in crowd. He was the one that hung out with the cool, you know, the, the, you know, the table that all the cool people sit at. He sat at that table, and I would sit across the lunchroom and just... Oh. Now... You turn from that duckling into this swan. You're pretty together. What has happened in your life now? What do you do? Are you married? No. What do you do? I actually am a singer and an actress. See? And... <laughs> a lot of it has to do with, I want to say, look, you know, I was just a nice person then as I am now. Um, my self-esteem has changed quite a bit. But I want him to look, and I, if he hasn't changed, I want him to be able to look at himself and take a look at himself and say, you know what, I was wrong, and I should have given, you know, maybe even you a chance then. Now, he, he has no idea, and she thinks he won't know who she is. So the poor guy is going to go on national television and be put on a spot. You go and hide, and we're going to bring him out. So you go backstage there. You can hear what he's saying. There we go. Okay? Hey? Uh-huh! Uh -huh. Tony, did you know when you were in junior high school that you were a hot number? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. No. You did not? <laughs> I was never told that in your know. Do you ever see anybody from the old junior high school? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't remember. You can't remember I don't, who? I can't, no. All right, that's, I'm, I'm being unkind to you, I think. Uh, did you know someone still uh, has a crush on you from way back then? No, I didn't. I know. Are, are you married with 30 kids? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mystery woman, come on out.
not tell him your name. Do you have any idea who this is? <laughs> looks vaguely familiar. She looks vaguely looks familiar. familiar. Uh, yeah. You have no idea. That's perfectly all right. You're, you're on the spot. You do not have to lie. You just oh, tell me the truth. No, no. idea. <laughs> Let me show you a picture of her. Okay? There she is. Well, there she was. And there she is and was again. No, right? Mystery no. woman, introduce yourself. My name is Annette. Annette. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, in junior high school, I remember sitting in class and I would write you notes, but I'd never give them to you. And in these notes, I would, I would ask you if you would call me or go out with me sometime. And uh, I didn't have enough guts to do it then, but I'd like to do it now. Oh, yeah. oh I'd love to go out with you. <laughs> go ahead. We'll be uh, right back. You send me those three pictures. <laughs> that really uh, letter really got to me. This is Pam, okay. and this is her fourteen-year-old daughter Rebecca. <laughs> they they pushed my head into the locker and wouldn't let me move and stuff. If you could, zoom, you get a wish. What would the wish be? To be popular, to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm not going back out there with you. I am not. No, no, no. Not bad. What you're seeing now are the lovebirds enjoying their romantic lunch. Looks good so far, doesn't it? Okay. I, uh, I just told everybody to go out and leave them alone. I receive thousands of letters each day, and uh, the ones that touch my heart, I think, the most are the ones from kids. And this one really got to me. Listen to this. Dear Sally, I'm writing you this letter because I'm tired of being made fun of all the time for how I look. It hurts my feelings so much that I feel like throwing up every time they say something. Sometimes I call my mom to pick me up from school because I can't take it. I feel sad all the time. I wish I could look different so other kids would stop treating me so bad. I hope you can help me, your friend Rebecca. You send me those three pictures. <laughs> that really uh, letter really got to me. This is Pam, okay. and this is her fourteen-year-old daughter Rebecca. Uh, you want the bad news or the good news? You want the bad news or the good news? Which? Which? Choose one. Okay. The bad news is the same as the good news. Do you know, how old are you now? Fourteen. Fourteen? Well, do you know what I looked like at fourteen? I wish I had a picture. I looked exactly like you, so it's bad news and good news. <laughs> well, I had red hair. I had red hair and blue eyes. No, I had red hair and all those freckles and all of that. Exactly, exactly. So that's the bad news. You're going to crawl up and look like me. We're going to put old age makeup on you. Show you that. Pam told our producers that she was very worried about Rebecca. Why? Becky has a real hard time at school. Kids always make fun of her. What do they make fun of? 
Well, she's... As I said, this is a perfectly ordinary, nice-looking yeah. face. Yeah. What's wrong with that face? I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Right. So why did they pick on her? Red hair and freckles? Freckles, and she has a um, learning disability. Right. And uh, it seems to bring more attention to her. You removed her yeah. from school last year with only three days left of yeah. school? Yeah, I did. Couldn't uh, you tough out the three days? No, why? They would, they would, they'd push my head into the locker and wouldn't let me move and stuff. They'd lock me in the restroom and wouldn't let me get out and stuff. The kids have jumped her. <laughs> yeah. Is that correct? Rebecca will not eat lunch because she's afraid she'll be picked on. Do you have a good family? Yes, you do. I think you're very pretty. I really do. Does it What do the other kids in school look like? Does no one else has red hair? No. No one else has freckles? The boys do. Some of the boys do. Some of the boys have red hair? And they're still picking on you. If you could, vroom, you get a wish, what would the wish be? To be popular. To be pretty. To be pretty. I, I like your hair. I hate touching it. <laughs> if you want it. You know what? People would die for this color naturally. But if she wants it, I guess it's, it's her business. She deserves to feel beautiful. So I'm going to grant you a wish. Vum. You know what the wish is? It's Richard. Richard is our show's personal stylist. Here he comes. Hi, Rich. Vum. This, this is a gift. I know, but you know the problem? You're going to want to keep her hair this color. Well, I mean, look what I'm stuck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. I'm making you red but and I'm taking it away from her. But she wants the hair changed. Uh, you look can, alike. You want to negotiate? Yeah, I, she looks exactly the way I look. That's the bad news. All right, you go with Richard. Richard, on, be sweetie. careful. Take her, take her away. Okay. We'll check up later in the show. We'll be right back. Should we find out how Annette's date with the junior high? <laughs> Tony, Annette, come on out. There you go. First of all, did we really give you any lunch, or was that just like a setup? Did we give you lunch? Oh, no, it was good. Yeah. Was it? It was very good. Really? <laughs> Tony, don't you wish you'd asked her out a little sooner? Yeah, now. See? There. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Oh, well, would you like to go out and do something sometime, whatever, get to know each other? I think that'd be a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you. Fun. Cool. What a heck of a job I've got. I would like to introduce my next guest. This is, if you, you should know her if you watch this show, this is family therapist, Isabel Richards. Welcome. Back. Hi, Sally. Thank you. Isabel. We have been talking to people who were once ugly ducklings or thought they were. Yes. Now, I maintain not every du ugly duckling is an ugly duckling, but be that as it may. And they've really worked on themselves and they've turned into swans. But one thing I've noticed is there are a lot of scars that people still bear. 
they have to tell somebody off or they have to find somebody. Why is it so hard to let go of those painful memories? Well, because I think it's when it occurs. It's during adolescence when we all feel like ugly ducklings. And what was surprising to me as I was watching the show in progress was that they really weren't all that unattractive, but they felt that way. And as adolescents, we always think we say the wrong thing, we don't weigh the right weight, we don't have the pretty enough face. And this is particularly true, I think, for females more than it is for males. You have a list of tips to help people get over the ugly duckling pain. Yes. What are they? Well, the first one is, is to seek uh, self-esteem and to seek uh, good feelings about ourselves from ourselves, not to look outside for encouragement. You know, it has to do with being able to have good interpersonal skills and how do we deal with others. And I know in your situation, Pam, with Rebecca, you've moved around a lot, so she's been in a lot of different schools, which made it difficult for her to establish relationships. Later on, we all have to know how to confront so situations. So if you help your children out, yes. when they're going through this, they don't learn it themselves, so the answer as a parent is hands off. I think that letting go of the past is very important. Sometimes we have to confront the past. You talked before about, Tammy, about uh, needing to do that in order to shut the door on the past. Right. Yes, that's important. We don't want to bring the past into the present because then we carry it around like a sack of potatoes, you know. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, you remember 14-year-old Rebecca who uh, was very depressed because she felt like an ugly duckling. <laughs> so uh, we decided to give her a fabulous makeover in hopes that this would lift her spirits. I hope it's fabulous is what I'm saying. Um, we wanted to make her pretty, that's what she wanted, and give her some confidence because she was pretty weepy, you know. She wanted to, uh, we want her to go to school with her head held high. Well, the makeover is done. Now here's what Rebecca looked like, which I think had beautiful hair, beautiful skin, <laughs> lovely smile. I don't know how anybody would improve on that, but let's see Rebecca now. Come on out, Rebecca. Just say what you just said. She looks pretty. She really looks pretty. How do you feel about it, Rebecca? How do you feel? Crying. <laughs> She's not crying. She's not That's crying. That's a little bit better. What do you think, Mom? Oh, I think she's beautiful. I want to thank Express for supplying uh, Rebecca's beautiful clothes, and we want to thank Richard Penna from uh, Richard uh, Penna Salon for doing what I think is a beautiful makeover. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do, okay? These mean people who are at your school uh, and give you a hard time, do you think when you go back you can just walk through the school, you know, breeze it through? Do you think so? It's going to be hard, isn't it? Yeah, tell you what. Tiffany, would you go to school with her? The Sally Show is going to go back to school with you, and yeah. if they pick on you, they're going to have to pick on me first. Okay? You go, girl. You go and work for school. Okay? Okay? So we're going back to Ohio. You are? 
She's going with you. She's going back to Ohio. I got to tell you, this is one tough killer. If anybody touches you, you don't have to deal with me. There you go. We'll be right back. All right. Sally, it's my first day back to school since you gave me my makeup. I'm so excited and I just don't know what to wear. You look beautiful. I can't already stand it. I know. so pretty. You do. You look gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, you look great! 